the square matrix A, that's n by n, can only be diagonalized if A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. Often when you try to prove an if and only if, you prove it in one direction first and then in the other direction. So what we're going to start with is assume that A can be diagonalized, and we're going to then prove that A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So we know that matrices X and lambda exist that satisfy this right here. We can rewrite that as such because we can multiply both left and right of the equal sign by X from the left. That gives you this right here. We can then partition X by columns and expose the elements of the diagonal matrix. And if we then plug that into this right here, what do we get? On the left, we get A times these vectors that are the columns of matrix X. And then you remember from week two that that's just the same as multiplying each of the columns by A. If we expose the columns of X and the elements of the diagonal matrix, then we remember that if you multiply from the right by a diagonal matrix, all you do is you scale the individual columns. And then since there's an equal sign, you know that this must be equal to that. And lo and behold, you can read off the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. So that proves it in one direction. If we now want to prove it in the other direction, we say, what if A has n linearly independent eigenvectors? Then we know that this is true for i equals 0 to n minus 1. What we can do then is collect all n of these as the columns of a matrix on the left here, and all n of these as the corresponding columns on the right. And notice that if you have equality here, it means that this column is equal to that column, etc., and that all comes from this. And then we re remember that you can just take the A outside and then collect all of the columns as the columns of matrix X. And you can do the same thing here. You realize that this is just the matrix X multiplied on the right by a diagonal matrix. And then if you multiply both sides by X inverse, then you get exactly what we were after. A matrix that cannot be diagonalized is called a deficient matrix. And it's deficient in a sense that it doesn't have n linearly independent eigenvectors associated with it. Now we saw earlier that the matrix 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 did not have a full set of eigenvectors. Why? Because it had, an, it had a null space of dimension 1. Now here we have the matrix 2, 1, 0, 2. Obviously lambda equals 2 is an eigenvalue. Subtract that off, you end up with the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0. It only has one linearly independent eigenvector, and therefore it is deficient. So let's see if we can visualize a deficient matrix, a matrix that cannot be diagonalized. Well, here we go. Notice that when x points in the direction of the vector 1, 0, the unit, first unit basis vector, a times x points in the same direction as x, so that is an eigenvector. But the only other time at which the vector x and a point in the same direction is when they point in the opposite direction of the eigenvector 1, 0. So there is only one eigenvector.